Welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to journal again, obviously. I'm going to show you how I journal and I'm going to talk to you about the materials that I use. So before we go into detail about that, these are the essentials that I use. You obviously need a journal, it doesn't matter what kind of journal it is, as long as it works good for you. For example, when you want to use watercolor, make sure that you have thick paper so the paint will not leak through. Today I'm also going to use glitter washi tape, a black fine liner, glue and magazines. When it comes to journaling, it's easiest to already use what you have at home. Do not go to the nearest craft store and buy a lot of journaling things when you already have most supplies at home. For example, instead of magazines, you could also use newspapers. So I think it's time that we start journaling. As you can see, I start with a white and a black paper sheet. I created this galaxy effect on the black paper sheet by using white paint and a paintbrush. It's really easy to create this effect and it looks cool in my opinion. For this journal entry, I already got a few pictures from magazines. I just cut out images that I thought would fit. I get a lot of questions about how I start with a journal entry. Most of the time I just look for a certain image or color that draws my attention. If I find that, I'll just look for other images that will fit the color spectrum. Sometimes I add a few illustrations or I add my own words to make the entry more personal. What's important about this is that it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect or symmetrical or outstanding. The point of journaling is mainly to give your thoughts and emotions place in a visual way. It's not about wanting to create masterpieces. Just let your thoughts flow and do whatever you feel like. I think for me, journaling has really helped me with finding my own style in designing or creating. It also helped me realize that I really like to share my words with people. I remember writing stories as a child and I felt so insecure about them that I didn't want anyone to read it, but now I've grown more comfortable in sharing my work. This is because I realized that your work doesn't need to be utterly perfect to share it with the world. No one expects this from you. So here I uh, add a few quotes. And now it's time to head over to the second page. As you can see, I draw lines with my black fine liner. You might also notice that it's not the best idea ever to draw in bed because the lines are not exactly straight. But as I mentioned before, journaling is all about creating messy drawings and imperfect pages. So it's okay. I'm now finishing the page by adding the last pictures that I got for this journal entry. I'm also adding some other de details that I got from an old book. Sometimes I get the question when I know that I finished a journal entry. When, when is it enough? I know a lot of journalers feel like they need to fill in every space in their journal. They want their journal pages to be as chunky as possible. And this is a great way to do it. But for me, I actually like to have white space in my journal. I like how the pages can be busy sometimes, but also keep their simplicity by focusing mostly on two or three colors. This is the final outcome of my spread. If you want to see the details, you could pause the video for a moment. Now that I've shown you the end result of my journal entry, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, you know where to leave them. And since it's the new year, I hope all of your dreams will come true in 2018. Bye!